and welcome back to the channel. Today, small problem with the toilet right behind me, which is filling extremely slowly. So let's take a closer look and see what we need to do to hopefully get it fixed. start by showing you how bad the problem actually is. Just going to screw the button back in the mechanism so we can actually flush the toilet. Now as you can see so far, so far so good, we're full of water, but let's flush. <laughs> I think you can agree, well that's not going too far too fast. So is it actually a problem with the inlet valve? Well, perhaps. Now, if we move the float up, pretending that there is water in there, this will actually stop. A bit difficult to tell because actually it was effectively only dripping anyway. And if I release it, well, as I said, not exactly a great deal of difference between the two, no, but it has now started again. So definitely could be an issue with this, or more specifically, the filter that I believe is sitting in the bottom of it. However, we do have an isolator. So let's see. Well, you can see by all the webs and everything else on it. <laughs> That's not been used. So let's see if we can actually get this to turn. Let's hold it. Oh. Right, that's good. Should have stopped, or it will do in just a minute, hopefully. The dripping. Again, as it's not exactly the biggest flow in the world, it's not exactly easy to tell the difference. With that now stopped finally, after a couple of minutes, what I'm just gonna do is wrap an old shirt that I've got, but you know, you could use a towel or anything else, just around the pipe work, as we're gonna obviously undo it and try and have a look at that inlet valve. What I've also got is what is known as a plum tub, which fits around, as you can see, the pipe work, and in theory, is supposed to catch any water that runs down the pipe. But even if it catches some, That'll be better than nothing. Before we undo anything, let's just get rid of some of the water that has actually ended up back in there. And to get just the very last of the water out of the cistern, not that there's much, I'm just gonna stick a towel in. I've got a nice array of tools here to get on that inlet valve nut. Um, let's start with this one, let's see how we get on. Plum tub seems to be doing its job and catching some stray drips of water. This is now very loose and moves incredibly freely as you can see and I can even lift it slightly. So let's just see if we can disconnect the pipe work. I think I need to undo this nut here too to pull this fitting off to then pull the original nut off which was holding the inlet to the cistern so I think we need to get this released. Probably could have done with doing that earlier. So 
So this now should just lift straight out. Superb. So let's take a closer look at what we've got. Now, looking in there, I can't actually see any sort of filter. So that is not good. Now let's just see if we can Let's just see if we can take this apart a little bit more and see if we can see any reason for a blockage or anything to restrict the flow of water into the system. Can't really see anything obvious there. Perhaps it's the mechanism here. And again, not exactly particularly dirty. Can't see any reason why the water wouldn't be free flowing through any of this. So that is really not a good sign. small bit of debris in there but nothing too serious the only thing i've found really so far i mean it is a little bit dirty but is this perished seal here which is basically split apart and that fits in this part of the mechanism which actually does control whether water is let into the system or not so we've got the float here which moves up and down according to the water level which connects to this arm and in here is where this seal lived I'm wondering if with that falling apart uh, it's having some impact on the water flow through here into the system. So it looks like we may need to get another one of these or indeed try and find another seal. But one thing I want to do just very very carefully first is actually just turn this isolator to see if we get any water flow coming through or if this actually is the problem further down into the pipe work. So I'm just going to be very, very careful. Well, I think that is pretty clear. The water that just came through there, the issue isn't further down into, into the pipe work or the isolator itself. So that is good news, even though we have made just a little bit more of a mess. So fortunately, I've gone into my plumbing spares box and actually found another valve. So that was really lucky. I've not had to pop out and get one. So obviously I've bought that for a job that uh, I didn't end up needing it for and didn't take it back. And not only have I found another one, I found one very, very similar. And that's important because this is directly in the way. So you can't have more of a traditional, if you want to call it traditional, uh, ball valve because there's just no room to put the ball. Now I've already adjusted the shaft of this, so effectively it's going to end up working at a similar level, so you can adjust it in multiple areas. Here this is more sort of fine tuning for the float, but also as well you can change the length of the shaft. So that is now similar to what we had before, so assuming it allows water through, should be absolutely fine. So I've got everything laid out that I need, or at least I hope I have. So the new valve, the new rubber washer, that will go on there and that will sit on the bottom of the system on the inside. That will then screw the inlet valve to the system on the other side. That will connect to this push fit connector. Oh, that will screw in to that push fit connector. And that push fit connector will then seat on the end of the pipe. Hopefully. So I've also got some plumber's mate, so that's basically some non-setting putty and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put some of that on this rubber washer, not much, but just to hopefully help prevent leaks. Uh, and then I've got some tape which I'm going to use probably on the thread, not on that one because we're not putting that one back, but on the thread of the new valve uh, just to help seal the connection with this connector. Although to be honest with you, I don't think that had any problems before or any tape. But anyway, while I'm there, there's no harm doing it. So that's what I'm gonna do.
so with that all connected let's just turn this back on really slowly so I've not fully turned the isolator hopefully as you can see already I can see quite a bit of water actually coming into the system so that's really really good news however We've also got to make sure that we don't have any leaks. No real obvious leaks, which is a good start. So let's open this up all the way and see what happens then. Oh wow, I can actually visibly see that filling up right now. It's already more than halfway up. Superb, but let's just go and make sure that we've not got any leaks. Okay, no. Nothing from the bottom of the system nothing from this connector so I think we're looking good but I will go back and check that again in a couple of minutes so I've actually given it another 15-20 minutes and absolutely no problems whatsoever I also checked around the isolator valve itself just in case as all the movement of the pipe work had actually caused any of that to come loose but that was absolutely fine too so I think we can say that that is job done anyway Thanks very much for joining me. Please like, subscribe and comment and I'll see you again soon back on the channel with some more videos.